have come home at last. This is my real country. I belong here. This is the land I've been looking for all my life, though I never knew it till now. The reason why we love the old Narnia is that it sometimes looked a little like this. Come further up. Come further in. I'm reading to you from the last chapter in The Last Battle by C.S. Lewis. You may not understand a word that I said because you don't understand the story. It starts with The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe and continues through several books. And the whole idea of why The Last Battle is important becomes very clear if you read all of those books. Here's another one. The Fellowship of the Ring. It's part of The Lord of the Rings. And there are many, many references in here to different people in different lands and the quest, the major quest to take the ring and destroy it and why that happens and who does it. It all is part of this. It's three huge books this thick long. Here's another one, Harry Potter. Well, if you have never read any Harry Potter, and I begin to talk to you about Hogwarts and Harry and Hermione and all of the wizardry and Quidditch, you don't get it if you haven't read the books. And each of the books builds on the other. You can read the last book, but you don't really understand how they got there. That brings me back to this book, the Bible. It really is one book, one story. It's the story of God. We don't know about God outside of what he has told us in his word. And that's why the Bible is so important. We know a lot about God because of the Bible. And in the Christian church, we spend a lot of time talking about the last 27 books that are called the New Testament and don't always spend a lot of time on the thir first 39 books called the Old Testament. But when Jesus rose from the dead, he was found on the road to Emmaus talking to his disciples and explaining to them how he was seen in the Old Testament. In much the same way, reading a series of books helps you understand why you get to the ending. Understanding the characters in the Old Testament help you to understand a lot better of how we get to Jesus. You've seen this map before. We spent a lot of time talking about Moses, who was raised in Egypt in Pharaoh's house and led out the people of Israel into the Sinai Peninsula, trying to get them back to the Promised Land where Jacob and his 12 sons had come out during a time of famine in Joseph's day. By understanding the Old Testament, we can see how wonderful God's revelation is to us through Jesus Christ. So Moses, with the leaders of the 12 tribes of Israel, is our Old Testament model that we're going to use and compare to, voila, Jesus and his 12 disciples. Many, many years later, there are many parallels that we're going to find. And we are going to be able to break out of the Sinai Peninsula and Egypt into the Promised Land. This is where Jesus was born. We've just come out of Christmas and we talked about Bethlehem and Nazareth where he's growing up and his journey from Galilee down to the cross. So in the next few weeks, we're going to see how the story of Moses leading the 12 tribes of Israel back to the promised land is reflected in the life of Jesus and his 12 disciples leading us to the promised land. Part one, part two. 
Old Testament, New Testament. 